Hello chaps, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition once again. As always, I do hope you're well. As you can see, there's a new guitar in town. This is, hang on, I've written this down because it is a bit of a mouthful. This is the Harley Benton TE-90 FLT SB Deluxe Series, which fair trips off the tongue, doesn't it? So now we've got that out of the way, let's call it what Harley Benton aren't allowed to call it for legal reasons. This is a Cabronita style Telecaster. And we'll have a look at all of the specifications and um, the construction and everything in a moment. But first of all, let's hear how she sounds. I think you'll agree a rather impressive um, range of tones on offer there as always I was playing through my trusty Vox Tone Lab ST for that demonstration um, now then you've heard what it sounds like let's take a look at uh, what's going on in terms of the construction materials and build and everything here are the specs okay starting up at the top end we have the back to front headstock which sports six unbranded chrome tuners and a plastic nut we have a canadian maple neck with a separate maple fingerboard so there's no skunk stripe down the back uh, 22 medium jumbo frets and what feels something like a 12 inch fretboard radius although i couldn't swear to it the neck itself has a satin finish and is incredibly comfortable. It's uh, very reminiscent actually of a music man kind of neck profile, so no bad thing there. It's joined to the body with a quartet of bolts and a metal plate and the body itself is ash. It's chambered ash to be precise. Uh, there's a little bit of weight relief going on there and I'm assuming that the uh, what looks like a one-piece body when you look at the guitar is actually a veneer or some kind of top put over the, the top of the body that's been partially hollowed out. Uh, on the body we have two Roswell Filtertron style humbuckers 
and the strings are anchored via a hard tail bridge with through body stringing. Controls consist of just the basics really, a three way pickup selector toggle and a single volume and tone control. So there you go, that's how it sounds and that's what it's made from. Um, it's a really nice guitar, it has to be said. Um, it costs, I think, around about £160 I paid for this. Um, uh, it was bought for the um, from the uh, Guitars for Good Causes fund. Um, you know, this is one of the guitars that will be getting sold with proceeds going to Zoe's Place uh, in Middlesbrough, which is a charity which provides palliative respite and end-of-life care to children under five with terminal illnesses. So if you'd like to chuck a few quid into the uh, bucket for that cause, uh, just check out the link below this video. Then I use those donations to buy guitars like this, which get sold with proceeds going to the charity. Um, anyway, so it costs about £160, and for that, here's what you get. You get an attractive, I think it's rather attractive guitar, an attractive, great sounding, versatile, ash bodied, maple necked, uh, well made and impeccably finished guitar with a beautifully cut nut and perfectly level frets with no fret sprout or any kind of issues like that. Um, so what's not to like there? Well actually a couple of things. Um, there are a couple of gripes and I will run through them right now. Okay, number one is tuning stability. This guitar doesn't like going in tune and isn't very keen on staying in tune either. Um, a large part of this is down to these tuners here. Um, I've noticed recently on Harley Benton guitars that um, it's a bit hit and miss with the uh, tuning pegs. Um, I had a succession of Harley Benton guitars uh, from the SC450 uh, Les Paul copy that I had and then there was the acoustic which you can see there on the wall behind me then a TE40 kind of a black twin humbucker Telecaster type thing and then there's the um, CST24 uh, PRS copy and all of them the tuners are fine you know they just work they get on with the job and you know the, you know they do what tuners are supposed to do which is smoothly get the guitar in tune and keep it there but recently I've noticed that there is this kind of lumpiness to Harley Benton tuners um, you turn the peg and the gear doesn't quite engage straight away and there's a bit of lag so it's a little bit difficult to get the guitar perfectly in tune um, and yes before you say anything I have tightened up the adjustment screws there um, another thing which is um, a little bit, it takes a bit of getting used to, it doesn't add to the uh, ergonomics of the tuning experience, is this upside down headstock. Um, it just makes it all feel a little bit fumbly. Uh, when you've got a three a side headstock with three tuners here and three tuners here, they're spaced further apart so it's easier to find the right one, but um, this does feel a little bit uh, cluttered when you're trying to find the right tuner. No doubt it's something that you'll get used to if you own one of these guitars, but it is worth mentioning. Uh, the other thing which uh, causes massive tuning problems on this guitar are these string trees, um, especially the one for the sixth string, the E string. Um, it just grabs the string down and pushes it down too far, pulls it down too far, and there's just far too much tension on this side of the nut and the string continually goes sharp so much so that I've just unhooked that string uh, the sixth string from that um, string tree and the tuning stability is much better now it does seem a little bit like spoiling the ship for a hip of the tar with these tuners um, as you can see here if you go on to the Axis R Us website you can get a set of high ratio 19 to 1 ratio tuners uh, which are staggered in height uh, so that will eliminate the um, need for string trees altogether for 23 quid and that's retail price wholesale price they're probably going to be not much more than half that I would guess so let's say uh, 12 13 quid wholesale price and probably if you are running a factory like a Harley Benton factory you can buy them by the container load and get the price down even lower than that 
Um, so, you know, subtract the cost of this set of tuners that, uh, you know, if you were to kind of make the guitar without these and then add on the cost of the, those Axis R Us type tuners or something very similar. And I can't imagine that's going to impact the final retail price of this guitar very much at all. It would still be an incredibly cheap guitar, but it would have uh, a decent set of tuners on it. Uh, so if you're going to get one of these, budget on a new set of tuners. I would definitely say that. Now then, the other little gripe I have is that normally when I order a guitar from Toman, it takes a couple of days, which is incredibly good service. Uh, I'm in the UK, Toman are in Germany, and you know if I order a guitar on a Monday, it's here by the Wednesday, usually. Uh, well, this took about a week longer than that, and when I uh, queried it with Toman, you know, when I was still waiting for the shipping confirmation, let alone the guitar, uh, they said, okay, well, yeah, we're aware of your order, but the guitar is being uh, currently uh, fettled up and sorted out by our quality control department, which presumably all the other guitars that I've ordered that have turned up quickly have also gone through that process. So, you know, when a guitar has spent an extra week uh, being looked at by the um, guitar techs at Toman, you expect it, presumably, to turn up in a well-set-up fashion. Well, that's not quite the case. Um, it was nothing serious, but again, spoiling the ship for a hip, the tar springs to mind. Uh, the bridge saddles were set way too high and they were in a perfectly straight line. This guitar had not been intonated at all. Which, I mean, that's no problem, I can do that myself, but, you know, if you're a beginner and buying a guitar and you don't have the knowledge to do a basic bit of setup work like that, then that's something to, um, you know, kind of think about. Um, also, the neck was uh, pretty much banana shaped. It had a huge uh, bow in the neck. And the reason for that was because the truss rod simply wasn't tightened at all. Uh, when I kind of thought, okay, I'm going to have to tighten the truss rod here, and I started adjusting it, it, it felt so loose that I, I initially thought that the truss rod, truss rod was broken. Uh, but, you know, eventually it did kind of bite, and, you know, we, we straightened the neck out. Um, so a couple of little schoolboy errors, really, like that, that, that you know, shouldn't have occurred, but did. Um, anyway... Um, if you have a basic bit of guitar setup knowledge, it's not it's not the end of the world. But as I say, if you are buying your first guitar, then and you get it with a an unplayable action and tuners that um, don't really work as they should, then it can be a little bit of a souring experience. Um, as I think I mentioned earlier, uh, the all the all the the good stuff was, all the important stuff was pretty good. Um, I've been over these frets with a fret rocker and they are absolutely perfectly level and very, very well finished. Uh, there's no fret sprout. Um, it's a very, very comfortable playing experience. Now the guitar is sorted out. So much so that, um, yeah, this guitar has already sold. <laughs> um, it's not being sold on eBay. It's not being sold to one of my students. Um, this is my guitar here. I get a few quid every month off YouTube for these videos. And this month when the check comes in, this is what I'm buying with it. I will uh, make the uh, a donation of the purchase price plus a little bit more um, to uh, Zoe's place and then I can keep this guitar. This one's going nowhere. Um, it's it's an absolutely gorgeous guitar. I'm in love with the sound of it. It plays beautifully. As I said in that specification piece, um, it, it plays quite like a, a music man. It's got that nice kind of um, full but comfortable neck that you, you get on something like a music man silhouette. It's a beautiful playing instrument. These pickups sound awesome. Um, when I first took it out the box, I immediately started thinking, oh, yes, now, yes, if I if this was my guitar, I'd do this and I'd do that. And, you know, it's when you start thinking like that, you, you just know that <laughs> you're destined to own the guitar. So what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm probably going to swap the bridge saddles out for some brass ones, just because um, I, I like the sound of brass bridge saddles on uh, a fixed bridge guitar. Um, this scratch plate here looks a little bit uninspiring, so I'm going to be getting that 
get uh, recreated in tortoise shell yes I know I have a tortoise shell fetish it's uh, it's it's not something that I'm proud of but it's going to be uh, uh, finished in tortoise shell that and the other thing that I, I think I would like here is um, around the selector switch I just think it needs that um, Gibson-y kind of poker chip you know the rhythm and treble thing so I'm going to put one of those on there and of course the tuners are getting um, swapped out for those Axis R Us staggered jobbies and then it will be um, pretty much my uh, not my ult ultimate guitar because um, it depends on the mood I'm in what kind of music I want to play but it will certainly be um, getting used for a lot of kind of classic rock and bluesy type stuff that uh, I have a penchant for playing so there you go the Harley Benton TE-90 FLT SB Deluxe Series. A fantastic guitar, not without its faults, but even if you budget on uh, correcting those faults, you are still getting a hell of a lot of guitar for your money. Um, you know, I'm buying one. Well, I'm, you know, this, is, this one is mine. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, highly recommended. Now then, uh, that's the review over with. I'll just finish this video as I always uh, tend to do these days by saying if you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition, uh, then give me a shout via the details at the end of this video. Um, if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England, then you can come along for a face-to-face -face lesson. Or wherever you are in the world, you can have a lesson via Skype. And whichever way you do it, your first lesson is free, so you've got nothing to lose. And if you could find it in your hearts to just uh, chuck a few quid into the uh, Zoe's Place Guitars for Good Causes fund via the link below, you would make me very, very happy indeed. And one final thing, this channel has now reached over 6,000 subscribers, so the uh, Black Star Fly 3 amplifier uh, competition is closed. I've chosen the winner and notified them, and I'm going to... Um, nip out to the shops as soon as I've finished this video and uh, get the uh, amplifier in the post to them. Um, I'll do a, a Guitars for Good Causes update video later on this month and then you'll be able to hear the winning entry and um, there'll be a few other bits and pieces of news and stuff and a, a tally of the, the financial side of things as well. But for now that's it for today folks. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thanks for your time. I look forward to seeing you all again next time and Bye for now, folks.